so here we have an old Atwood water heater in a Terry Dakota RV trailer. It is a water heater Atwood GC6AA10E model. And what we have here is I replaced the thermostat and the eco thermostat inside there, plugged all the wires back in. I bought me a new control board just in case. This one looks pretty old. I might have to replace that. But right now I just took out the uh, drain plug, the anode rod. All I did was just, you know, crank it off there with this. We're gonna get in on the other side. On these two particular models, the heating element is not on the outside of the unit, it is on the inside. So we are going to go in there and take a look here. This is the inside of the RV. This is where these particular models are at. Enter in the back side to get to the heating element, which is right there. There's the heating element right there. It needs a special wrench to take it off. So what we're gonna do is disconnect the black wire with the Phillips head and the white wire here with the Phillips head. Now remember, before you do any of this, you gotta make sure that the power is off. So we got the power off to the water heater, as you can see. Not only that, but we also have that switch off as well, which controls the gas and the electric. In order to take this puppy off, like I said, you had to drain the water. And I have a towel here just in case any excess water comes out of here because as you can see, the uh, element is a little bit lower than the drain plug outside. So of course you're gonna get a little bit of excess water. You might want a towel. Here is the special wrench to take off this thing. It's about 10 bucks or something like that on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I'm going to start cranking this puppy off. Alright, we got that sucker. Now we're going to get around that wrench right there and crank this puppy out. I got this sucker around it. I got this flathead screwdriver in there just enough. Now on this particular model, um, it's facing towards me. I've seen other videos where it's on the side uh, Either way uh, you might need to take this unit out to do this job um, Luckily the unit the element was facing me and gave me direct access as long as I take took out these little boards here I haven't experienced any water coming out yet um, I will keep you posted. I ordered the other element on Amazon I'll get to that here in a second. Link will be in description on what heating element you need to replace. I'm in the process of painting right now, so don't mind that. Note to self, having the shop vac and a towel was a really good idea because it started pouring, gushing out. I don't know if I got it all. It gushed out, and there was a lot. And I you know, soaked it up in my shop vac. I had it ready. So yeah, just be ready for that. To attempt to take this out with one hand. And I did have to remove this bottom panel. As you see, I wouldn't have been able to lift it up out. So that's a good indication of what you may need to do. If your particular model is facing this way and you get lucky like I do. As you can see, this one's all rusted up. It looks like crap. We're gonna get some light in there. And as you can see, there's the hole. Remember, if you find yourself fighting with it and you can't get the new one in, it might be because the old O-ring is still in that sucker. So I got it out and it fit right in like a glove. Now I'm gonna crank it in. I got it nice and tight in there. Now, it's very important that you don't go rush and turn this thing on right away. If you turn anything on, the breaker, 
as well as the unit itself uh, without water in it first. Uh, this new element you replaced will fry pretty quickly. It's raining right now, I gotta go put the drain plug in, turn the water back on and let this sucker you know, fill back up with water. Check to see, make sure it's not leaking or whatnot. You might have to run back out there and shut the water off. It might be a two person job if uh, you wanna get somebody on the phone or just if you're quick enough, run. All right, so I put the drain plug on outside. It was raining, so I didn't really show that part. I don't see any leaking and that's a good sign. So I'm going to continue to hook everything back up. I filled her up. I noticed when I hit this switch, which you know, combines the hot and cold together. You want to make sure this is, this valve is not letting the hot water and cold water mix. But I noticed when I did let it mix, it filled the tank up faster. So needless to say, I'm gonna shut that off. I'm gonna go out there and make sure it's not leaking out of the drain plug. Start hooking this baby up. All right, so I'm gonna open it up. I don't see any leakage coming from the anode rod drain plug. Now I read online that the Atwoods have an aluminum tank. And if you have an aluminum tank, you don't really need an anode rod and you can just put a plug in it. I don't know, somebody, if you know about that, put a, a comment down below. Let me know what you think. But I don't have an anode rod in my alum aluminum tank. So I don't know if I'm gonna put the control board on. I'm gonna, you know, crank everything up, see if it works without it and I might just return that thing, I'm not sure. But I kind of wanted to have all new stuff. As you can see, this thing has been through hell. So at this point, guys, we turned the water on outside. I heard the tank fill up. You know, I turned the breaker switch on for the water heater. I turned the water heater button on in the front of the trailer. Now we're just waiting here. All right, so I installed everything. And lo and behold, it didn't work. Dun dun dun. Well, did a lot of research, and with the multimeter, I went to the source. On these models, your battery, 12 volt, is hooked up to this right here. Okay? So, you want to make sure that the switch that turns on your water heater, it has. 120 volts going to it that that goes to the relay and it has the 12 volts going to the circuit board outside so you want to make sure that your switch what happens is that the circuit board goes straight to the switch and from the switch to the circuit board first things first you test your switch you open that baby up that's your gas side that's your electric you test this for 12 volts with it on. If you're not getting 12 volts, you gotta trace this wire back. It looked just like this. I opened up this cabinet. I did the screws here, found out it went through the roof. And obviously, it's gonna come back down somewhere. So I opened up this. I found it coming down through there and I found the correct wire. I traced it into this circuit here and found that it was going into this circuit right here, which had a blown fuse. Got this sucker grounded on an alligator clip. I'm gonna, I got it on DC 12 volts. I'm going to explain to you what I found out. Now from the switch, I followed the wire from the switch that wasn't getting 12 volts and found that it was coming to this terminal here. If your fuse is blown, you're not gonna get power to here. The fuse is what sends the power to these. You don't really have to test your fuses, you just gotta see if you're getting power to these. So what I'll do is I'll touch this one here. We're getting 12 volts, look at that. Touch it here, here, here. I wasn't getting 12 volts to this for some reason at the time. What do you know? I'm getting power to that switch now. So always remember, follow the switch wire to this thing if you're not getting any 12 volt to the switch because that will not power your circuit board. 
you got to get yourself the voltmeter, put it on DC. You're going to put the red one in the V with the little um, ohm symbol, MA. Red one goes there. Black one goes in the com. You can pick one of these up at your local Harbor Freight for, you know, 10 bucks. I picked this up for $7. This is going to measure your DC volts coming from your battery, the 12 volt. This is going to measure AC current coming from your breaker box, you know, where you're getting your shore power from. The switch in the front of the RV wasn't getting 12 volts of the power it was supposed to be getting. So I followed that to the circuit breaker, which I told you I had to reconnect that wire. Basically, what you need is on these two prongs here, on your water heater element, these two prongs need to read a 120 volts your heating element needs that 120 volts how this works is when you flick your switch on in the front it sends 12 volts through a white wire to your circuit board outside your circuit board then powers on and sends 12 volts through the brown wires which go to your thermostat and ECU basically reading the water temperature and going back to the circuit board to tell it okay now you got to tell the relay to turn on because it's too cold or it's too hot once it detects it's too cold and it needs to heat it sends 12 volts through this yellow wire from the circuit board if you're not getting 12 volts out of this yellow wire it is not going to close this relay to let 120 volts go to your element. So if you're not getting 12 volts into this yellow wire, it's not going to close your relay, allowing 120 volts to your heating element. If you're getting 12 volts out of here and it's still not closing the relay, either you need to check your ground here, make sure you got a good ground, or you might need to replace this relay to get it to click over. So at this point, I'm like, oh my god, I wasn't getting voltage to the switch the entire time. I wasn't getting any power to the element, 12 volts. Now, I came out here, I put my multimeter to this white cord here. You get power from the switch that you turn on and off from the front to this white wire, which controls this control board here. You want to test the 12 volts coming in from this white wire. Needless to say, I'm getting 12 volts into this wire. The control board turns on from that 12 volts and it starts sending electricity through these brown wires, which goes through your, you know, thermostat and eco. And it tests the water. If it's too cold, it's telling the control board, we need to turn this heating element on because it's too cold. Or it's too hot and you need to stop working. This control board, if it's fried, will not send 12 volts to the yellow cord. It will not send 12 volts to the brown cord, which activates your thermostat. So if you're not getting voltage when this is plugged in on this yellow wire on the inside where your RV water heater is, if you're not getting 12 volts out of this circuit board, then you need to do some checking over here. Right now, I'm getting 12 volts out of this white wire into the circuit board, but I'm not getting 12 volts out of the brown wire. But when I turn on the gas, I get my clicking sound. So it's pretty confusing. These control boards can go on you. First thing you want to do is check your, your fuse here because I called Atwood. That was the first thing the lady told me to check was this fuse. This fuse is good. I'm still not getting the 12 volts I need through the system. So when this control board comes in, hopefully it solves my problem. I'll keep you guys posted. So guys, after fiddling the, with this thing for like two or three weeks now, I don't know if you can hear that. But you see this little ghetto shit I got here? I pushed up on the terminal and one last little, man, this connection must not be good. And I kind of pushed on it and I heard a noise. I heard a kind of like a whistling, humming little noise click on. And then two seconds later, I heard the relay click. I almost cried a little bit. 
I'm not gonna lie guys. I am no professional when it comes to this kind of stuff. I was completely new. I learned a whole lot. I got some new pin connections that are coming in tomorrow. I'm gonna redo everything. Just for now, I hooked it up like this. As you can see, we don't use the gas portion of our system. So I just took that part out. I had a bad connection on the white pin. You have to keep everything in line. The brown wires at the top, the white wires next, and the orange wires next. I couldn't find these necessarily on Amazon, the connectors themselves. That would be a lot easier if I could just replace the connectors. But really, all you really need to do is replace the, uh, the pins that go in them. Yeah, I can hear it. I heard the relay click on after I put this little guy on there. It's just a bad connection. I'm keeping it like this so I can actually take a shower. And then I'm probably going to take it off until I can get a better connection on here. I'm not going to leave it like this. Let's do the test. Let's see if we're getting this 120 volts. So we're going to set it to the 200 ACV. What we need to do is touch the black and white wires. All right, so boom, 120 volts around there. That's what we need to power that baby right there. So again, all I'm doing is putting my prongs on each end of the heating element. 120 volts coming into there. That means my heating elements should be working. If you're getting 120 volts on that white and black wire there and you're not getting hot water and you can feel no heat coming from any of these pipes. This is your red. It should be a little hot when this stuff turns on. If you're not feeling heat, you may need to replace your heating element. That's my boy. Ow! All right, guys, so to be honest, I really couldn't find the correct pin size for those Molex pins. We got just enough wire on that baby right there to get this sucker on it, all right? See, that bottom part hooks to the plastic. You wanna have a good connection on the metal part itself. The ones I purchased were not the, the right size, but luckily I used the male end of or the female end, rather, instead of the male end, which I use on that one. Uh, we don't hook the gas up to ours anyway, so I, I took the gas lead out. I put a female pin on this one, which happened to be a little bit thicker, was able to grasp the, the connection that we needed. It's working pretty good. I gave it a nice wiggle test, and I can still hear a faint whistle coming from it. You can just slightly hear the electricity flowing through it once you get it to click. You might even hear the, uh, the relay click itself. 